Hello and welcome to Replay Value. Usually when I think about setting, it's in the format of how it succeeds as a set piece, which means I'm mostly focused on how the action takes advantage of its terrain. Whether that's a spectacular fight in a city, climbing a train car hanging off of a mountain range, or a palace either in the real world or in the metaverse. The more expressive, explosive, and flashy, the better when it comes to framing an action scene. And in general, a great setting helps to create a great moment. I still remember approaching Red at the top of Mount Silver for the first time. I'll never forget Spike falling out of a stained glass window in Cowboy Bebop. And my jaw is still agape from the funhouse scene at the end of The Lady from Shanghai. But that's not the only type of action that exists. There's also this kind. The kind that happens every frame, or second, or sentence. The kind that, regardless of medium, is defined by the passage of time. And in doing so, seeps into every scene. And depending on how the setting is treated, can amplify every single moment in the narrative. And if there is one recent film that reminded me how important setting is, regardless of intensity, it's Liz and the Bluebird. A big thank you to Akoha, Alex, and Ting, three of my patrons who all requested that I cover Euphonium last month. Sorry, it was late. There's no better way to start a discussion of the setting than to begin with the second scene of the film, as Mizore walks onto the grounds. The sparse sounds of various instruments create this unbridled feeling of potential. Who knows what song they're going to break into, or what's going to happen on screen. It gives the sense that anything could happen in this space. And between the long shot of her shoes on the pavement and then again of her on the staircase provide a real physicality to even the simplest aspect of the school, the walkway in. After Nozomi joins up with Mizore, great audio direction by bringing the music to life just as she turns the corner, we begin the walk through school. And this decision to roll the opening credits through a mostly silent journey to the music room is what brings Kitauji to life. You get a real sense that this is a place that is lived in, where routines have been established, and that is in no small part thanks to three minutes of watching Nozomi and Mizore making their way to the music room, presumably like they do every day. Given that the entire film takes place in Kitauji over the course of several days, with the exception of flashbacks and story visualizations, it gives this walk to the concert band room a perpetual importance. We've entered this space with these two characters and we're left there until they leave once the film is over. So this conjoinment of viewer and character settles us into the school grounds as though we're being taken on a tour of the next hour and a half. There's also a real verticality to the space as we walk up staircase after staircase as though we're building to something grand. And all the while, the small engagements between Mizore and Nozomi, from the way they walk together to interacting with something like a water fountain. The school's space becomes immediately important on a shot like this one, whereas it takes a back seat for something like this. A good setting should support the action on screen. Slightly opaque windows enables us to instantly grasp the space and sets a clear focus on the two girls. And most of the time, the setting is supporting these concepts. Whether that's separating Mizore and Nozomi into different rooms, using a rainy day to emphasize emotional turmoil, or leaving the room through a push out the window as Mizore plays the final notes of the piece to symbolically match the Bluebird's departure. That climactic moment also works so well because we're so familiar with the space. A theoretical transplant into a concert hall just wouldn't bring the same down-to-earth and shared experience that makes this song and performance so heart-wrenching. We've watched Mizore and Nozomi sit here to interact and practice a few times and can extrapolate the dozens of times they've done it before. And if you've seen the previous two seasons, you've spent a lot of time there. The finality of this moment though, the idea that the number of days to practice together in this room are limited and that they'll be letting each other go shortly is something that requires this setting and this space. But for me, my favorite sequence in regard to setting is this one. First off, this transition is probably the best in the entire year of 2018. How it matches the sensation of light dancing across a closed eye is frankly unbelievable. This biology classroom that Mizore is sleeping in is a fitting one. We're talking about birds after all. And when we're facing Mizore from this angle, everything seems bright. She's looking at Nozomi. 
and the way that the light bouncing off the flute connects the two of them despite the physical distance is an amazing interplay that respects the setting and thinks about how it can be used to create meaning. If you showed this scene to someone in complete isolation, they could probably extrapolate not only Nozomi and Mizore's relationship, but also the type of characters they are and maybe even their habits. Certainly, they'd be able to realize how important Nozomi is to Mizore, since as Nozomi disappears, we reverse our angle on Mizore, now setting her in shadow compared to light that Nozomi's direction provided. And it's fitting that in the emotional climax of the film, after our tearful goodbye to the music room, Nozomi and Mizore both occupy that biology room together, with golden hour lighting as the two finally come together, after being separated in distance and emotionally. It is the corresponding element of the realization they made while playing the song together, fittingly right across the way from where this scene is staged. What was put into song beforehand is now put into words. Two sides, of the same coin. Afterwards, the two still have some separation, the library versus the music room. Worth noting the amazing shots here to show that they're moving apart, but fortunately our movie doesn't end on a sad note. Instead, with the two walking out of the high school, that's been our home for the last hour and a half. From our slow and methodical entrance, from the music room to the library and the biology room, every hallway that made things feel cramped or distant, from the places we're familiar with to those that we're not, Kitauji has performed just about every job that could possibly be expected of it as the setting for Liz and the Bluebird. And so it's almost like we're leaving behind an old friend as the two exit the high school. Bittersweet foreshadowing for their eventual departure. But one can only remember how our characters entered the high school and how this small look into a few days centered around one friendship in a concert band has evolved with Nozomi now waiting for Mizore and Mizore taking the first step across the threshold. <laughs>